The transfer portal has been open on the FBS level for 10 days now, and we are keeping track of all of the comings and goings. Grace Remington here. Thanks for joining us today. We're covering the potential landing spots for the top quarterback and running back in the portal, Grayson McCall and LJ Johnson. How Jaheim Bell will fit into FSU's offense, schools that are getting hit a little harder than we expected in the portal, and some underrated prospects to keep an eye out for. So let's bring in our national reporter and transfer portal expert, Chris Hummer now. Chris, the quarterback carousel continues to spin. Three-year Coastal Carolina starter Grayson McCall, one of the hottest names on the market now. So what's the latest with him? Yeah, huge entrance into the transfer portal. Um, I don't know how many people have watched Coastal Carolina in the last couple of years, but Grayson McCall has been quietly one of the best quarterbacks in the country, thrown for 8, 000, over 8,000 yards in his career, 78 touchdowns against only eight interceptions, has completed over 70% of his career passes. This is a superstar quarterback in the portal, and I think a lot of teams are going to line up to go after him. Our Brandon Marcello reported that Auburn will receive a visit from McCall over the weekend. Um, I know Auburn is very interested in McCall. Hugh Freeze's offense is a perfect fit for him. McCall comes from a spread option offense at Coastal Carolina. He excelled in it. Hugh Freeze runs not exactly the same thing, but he would really be great in Hugh Freeze's version of the spread. I think some other teams that could enter the mix are Florida. Florida's obviously looking for a replacement for Anthony Richardson. I think they're going to add a portal quarterback. I think Grayson McCall would step in and help them right away. Um, Obviously, I think you have to consider Liberty at least a little bit. Um, Jamie Chadwell, Grayson's former head coach, is now the head coach at Liberty. If he wanted to stay in the same system and maybe jump up slightly in competition level to Liberty or at least to roster construction-wise, given the losses Coastal Carolina's had, that's an option. I've heard Wisconsin is a potential dance destination for Grayson McCall. Um, the Badgers have Phil Longo as their offensive coordinator now. They're not the ground and pound team of the past. The air raid is in Madison, Wisconsin. I think Grayson McCall would excel in that system if he gave Wisconsin a look, and then maybe even a Cincinnati. Um, the Bearcats um, probably need a new starting quarterback, and they certainly need a jump going into the Big 12. I think Grayson McCall could be an excellent fit there. There's plenty of teams that are going to be interested in Grayson, but those are some of the ones that come top to mind and I've heard early on in his recruitment. Yeah, two of those coaches you mentioned are already a little bit familiar with him. Hugh Freeze had to coach against him in the 2020 Cure Bowl, and then Billy Napier had to play against him in the 2020 regular season in the Sun Belt. But let's talk about the top-rated running back in the transfer portal, and that's LJ Johnson making the move after two seasons at Texas A&M. Uh, never really quite found his footing there. And I read your article, Chris, really great reporting. Sounds like he wants a more complete recruiting process. He didn't really get that while COVID-19 was going on. So what's he looking for this time around? Yeah, I talked to LJ over the weekend. Um, I think he, he didn't get to take visits, really. He didn't have to have meetings with coaches the first time around. I don't think he felt he was necessarily the best cultural fit in College Station, Um College Station isn't for everyone. Um, it's a great college town, but it is kind of out in the middle of not nowhere, Texas, but you're removed from a lot of the state there. And it works so great for some people, but I think LJ wants a bit more of a different college experience moving forward. Um, he was at SMU on Monday, Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday and Sunday. Sorry, long week. Um, and he enjoyed his official visit to SMU, I've been told. Um, I talked to his dad earlier today. Um, I think he's got an official visit at some point in the future to UCLA on deck. Um, he's very familiar with the Bruins. His actual former strength and conditioning coach from his local gym is the head strength and conditioning coach at UCLA, so there's a strong connection there. The Bruins are looking to replace Zach Charbonnet. Um, I think he'd be a natural fit in Los Angeles. He's also considering Oklahoma. DeMarco Murray, the Oklahoma running backs coach, has been in contact with, L or with LJ. Um, they need a new lead back with Eric Gray moving on. So um, he's got some really intriguing options in front of him. He is a former top 50 recruit. No, it didn't go his way at Texas A&M, but I think with the new start, LJ is somebody our transfer ranking uh, portal transfer portal rankings committee thinks could have a really special rest of his career. Right. Wasn't even the primary backup at Texas A&M. So sounds like sliding into a starting role at UCLA would be perfect. But let's keep it in the Lone Star State. TCU, one of the most efficient offenses in the country, and now they're looking to keep that rolling. Uh, you recently put in a few crystal balls for some portal players at TCU. So who you got? Yeah, TCU is going to be really aggressive in the portal under Sonny Dykes. Um, Sonny Dykes made that his playbook at SMU, totally changed, changed the SMU program. 
And I think he's going to do the same thing at TCU. Um, TCU is looking to take full advantage of the mo- momentum they have right now going into the college football playoff. I put in a crystal ball for TCU to land former Alabama receiver JoJo Earl, another former top 50 prospect. He played some 20 minutes away at Alito High School. Um, he had an injury kind of plagued career at Alabama, never quite going, got going the way we thought he would. But he's one of the most dynamic slot weapons in the country. I think he'd step in right away at a TCU would just be super dynamic. He'd be a huge upgrade for TCU as it looks to replace several key pieces in its wide receiver room. I put in a crystal ball for Alabama, or I'm sorry, for TCU to land former Alabama offensive top tackle Tommy Brockermeyer. Brockermeyer was a top 10 recruit in the 2021 class. Like Earl, injuries have held him back slightly in his career. He's only played in two career games for Alabama, but he is one of the most interesting pieces of clay in the portal. Um, he is somebody we viewed coming out of high school as a future first round offensive tackle like his dad blake uh, was out of the university of texas and i think he could be a huge addition to the tcu offensive line as they look to reload there and then i didn't put in a crystal ball here but 24 7 sports national recruiting director steve wiltfong put in a crystal ball for tcu to land former texas a m wide receiver chris marshall who was a five-star recruit in the 2022 class and you put marshall and jojo earl together and i know TCU isn't done in the portal either. TCU could be one of the biggest winners in the transfer portal of anybody in the country. Um, they're going hard after former kind of Texas kids looking for a new stop, and I think they're going to be a really popular destination uh, this offseason for players. Sonny Dykes, a perfect example of what can happen in this portal era. You don't need two to four years to build your team anymore. You just need, what, 12 to 18 months. It's crazy. Um, okay, one of the top playmakers in the porter portal was tight end Jaheim Bell and as soon as he entered his name I think we all kind of saw where he would end up and that's Florida State we know Mike Norvell loves his tight ends and now one of the most explosive offenses in the country gets even more dynamic with this utility player so what do you like about this matchup Chris yeah I think it's a really great fit Um, Florida State was the school I heard for Jaheim as soon as he went in the portal and it looks like he ended up there Um, I think he is a He's not a toy weapon. I think Barton Simmons used to use this term for some of these utility players. Um, But he can just line up everywhere. Um, He played running back for South Carolina this year. He's a tight end by trade. He can split out and be a wide receiver if he needs to. I know his production doesn't just pop off the screen for folks um, this year. Um, I I think he had a little trouble staying on the field because of some deficiencies in the blocking area for South Carolina. And that's what they needed him to do a lot more this year. But if you just talk about a player who fits into Mike Norvell's scheme, like Jaheim Bell does it perfectly, they run kind of a spread option hybrid with Alex Atkins and Mike Norvell kind of putting their brains together to put together one of the more creative offenses in the country. And I think Jaheim Bell is going to be used in a variety of ways and will be just a dynamic weapon for Jordan Travis next year. I'm I'm personally just really excited to see how they choose to use him because they can use him everywhere. And I think they will use him everywhere going into 2023. Yeah, Florida State going heavy on recruiting tight ends in the portal. They're also taking a look at Kyle Morlock from Shorter. Um, Well, while we're on the topic of South Carolina, let's talk about schools getting hit hard. The Gamecocks ended the season with a lot of momentum, getting two upset wins against teams ranked in the top 10. But they've since lost both starting tight ends, Jaheim Bell, as we mentioned, and Austin Stogner. And now running back Marshawn Lloyd, their leading rusher. So, Chris, what do you think's going on in Columbia? Yeah, I mean, nothing's wrong in Columbia. I just want to point out this is just where we're at in college football right now. Even a team with all the momentum in the world, as you mentioned, beat Clemson, um, beat Tennessee. They're two biggest rivals. Um, They have a ton of momentum on the recruiting trail. But even with all of the good things happening, you can lose players you don't want to lose. And I think Marshawn Lloyd's an excellent example of that. Like South Carolina didn't want to lose him. He was probably the best back in their running back room, former top 50 recruit. He was a banner recruit for them when they got him. And then all of a sudden, he's just kind of in the portal. I don't think the South Carolina coaches saw it coming. And it's just something that can happen in college football right now. Like a lot of times, like in the NIL era, you can lose a player you don't want to lose. And I think South Carolina, even with everything going right, had one of those situations with Marshawn Lloyd. Um, I think Jaheim Bell was a bit different of a situation. Austin Stogner also left their starting tight end. He went to Oklahoma, where he'd originally transferred from. So that's three key pieces of the offense gone out of South Carolina. And that's off one of the best seasons in recent memory for the program. So it can happen to anyone. It will happen to anyone. You're going to see players enter the portal from schools that you would not have expected. And I think South Carolina is just a great example of what can happen in this era. 
Let's also talk about UVA. Tony Elliott coming off his first season as head coach. Obviously, that entire community dealing with unspeakable tragedy, so we have to give them some grace there. But they've lost at least eight players to the portal, including <clears throat> quarterback Brennan Armstrong, their best cornerback and linebacker. So what do you think is next for them? Yeah, it's... It's hard to talk about UVA right now because obviously they're going through an unspeakable tragedy, but this is a team that struggled um, compared to expectations in year one under Tony Elliott, and they've seen some of their best players under the portal. Um, you mentioned Brennan Armstrong, their quarterback. Just two years ago, he led the Power Five in passing yards per game, and now he's in the transfer portal after a really pedestrian season by his standards. Um, Fentrell Cypress is, I believe, our second-ranked player overall in the portal. He was an all-ACC cornerback. He's in the portal exploring his options at places like Florida State. You have linebacker Nick Jackson, an all-ACC linebacker, who chose to enter the transfer portal. These are staple pieces for the program moving forward. And it's just like, it's a it's a difficult time for Virginia overall um, if you take anything away from what happened. But they're losing players they didn't want to lose. And I think they might continue to lose them um, with potential staff changes coming up. And Tony Elliott just has a lot of work to do moving forward. Um, I think it is worth noting that all of these players, after the tragedy that occurred, have been given an extra year of NCAA eligibility. So that might factor into some decisions. For example, I think Brandon Armstrong now has two more years left to play. So that could factor into how uh, these players are considering this. But it's it's been a rough go in the portal for Virginia. Let's go down to Stillwater, where Oklahoma State, we talked about this in our Transfer Portal Palooza show, Chris, is maybe dealing with some culture issues. Mike Gundy maybe has to make some adjustments a little bit, modernize his program, but it all started when four-year starting quarterback Spencer Sanders entered the portal. Then freshman running back Braylon Presley went on the record saying he didn't like how the offense was run. So what do you see happening next with OK State? Yeah, I mean, Oklahoma State's probably going to be fine. I should I should put that out there. Like, Mike Gundy has been one of the most successful coaches in college football for a long time. And while I think some people probably do think he needs to adjust a little bit to more modern players, like, they will eventually be fine. I don't know if they'll be competing for a Big 12 championship next year, but I think they'll be playing for a bowl. But it's never a good sign, <clears throat> excuse me, when you lose your four-year starting quarterback at Spencer Sanders, you lose a dynamic young receiver like Brennan Presley, you lose really good players off the defense like Trace Ford and Mason Cobb, who've been multi-year starters for you. Um, Oklahoma State has lost some really key pieces, and they're they're rebounding. Like Oklahoma State's going to add some players in the portal. They already have added a couple of really like important depth pieces in the portal. Players who are going to come in and start right away for them. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of the portal. You lose and you reload. But um, I think people in Stillwater going into this year were thinking 2023 would be a year where Oklahoma State could contend for championships. They were supposed to return almost everybody on offense, including Spencer Sanders. Some of their younger players were supposed to develop more. Um, they were going to get some key pieces back from injury, but I don't think that's going to be the case in 2023 because of that attrition. And um, it's just the risk you run in this era of the transfer portal. Now, the group of five expected to be ravaged as some of the players, you know, kind of the cream of the crop at that level are looking to go on to the next level. Kent State is one of the programs. They've lost five offensive starters. Four of those received all conference honors. And that's addition, in addition to five-year head coach Sean Lewis leaving for the offensive coordinator job at Colorado. So now one of the most fun offenses to watch in the country. They called it flash fast. They're going to have to be flash fast filling all these holes on the offensive side of the ball, but two under the radar transfers, Chris, you wanted to talk about were their receivers, Dante Cephas and Devontae Walker. What do you know about where they could end up? Yeah, Dante Cephas um, was one of the most productive receivers in the MAC the last two years. Um, he's been a very popular player in the transfer portal. He's received offers from places like Georgia already. <clears throat> um, our Brian Doan has a crystal ball in for him at Penn State. Um, I think Penn State is really in the mix for a guy who grew up in Pittsburgh. Um, there are a ton of other big schools in the mix for Dante as well, um, like including like nearby Maryland and schools of that nature. So he's going to have every option in the world. Um, you could say the same thing about Devontes. Um, I talked to him the other day. He's coming off a visit to Rutgers. Um, he has visits planned to Penn State, North Carolina as well. Um, he had 921 yards receiving this year and 11 touchdowns. He's one of the most dynamic players in the MAC. So they're losing two really excellent receivers to the portal. And I should mention their quarterback, Colin Shalee, 
is also probably going to be a Power 5 player. I know he's receiving interest um, from a couple Power 5 schools already. Um, so they're going to see, you're going to see a lot of Kent State at Power 5 schools this year, and that's to Kent State's um, detriment because they've lost a ton of really talented players to the portal after Sean Lewis left. All right, Chris, appreciate your knowledge as always. And before we sign out, everyone, mark your calendars. Join us Wednesday, December 21st, all day long for National Signing Day. We will be live from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, covering the top prospects and taking a deeper dive into your favorite school's 2023 class. And you know the news never stops. There is no offseason in college football. So while you're at it, subscribe to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel for all your college football updates. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.